We are continuing with the big nap. The big nap. Chapter 8, Ghoul of My Dreams. Next morning, the sun was chirping and the birds were shining, or something like that. My sleep-starved brain was so groggy, it was hard to figure out which end to put the Cheerios in. I dragged my sleepy self to room three. I didn't go inside, of course. I wasn't that sleepy. Facing a grumpy alligator first thing in the a.m. isn't my way to say good day, sunshine. Instead, Natalie and I leaned against the wall outside, watching for a certain young zombie. We didn't have long to wait. Shoof, shoof, shoof. Ina shuffled down the hall like a run-down robot in a second-rate sci-fi movie. Of course, zombies always walk like that. This I knew from watching lots of second-rate sci-fi. <coughs> we eased off the wall and into her path. Hi, Ina, I said. We'd like a word with you. Her dull eyes barely saw us. Must go, she said. Help teacher. This won't take a minute, I said. We just want to chat. I steered her gently off to the side. Ina, said Nellie, do you feel okay? Feel fine, said Ina. Your sister is worried about you, I said. Feel fine, Ina repeated, must go. This wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. Ina seemed like a graduate of the Frankenstein's Monsters School of Speech Making. We'd be lucky to get more than three words at a time from her. Why do you have to go, I asked. Must help teacher. Teacher good. She tried to walk away. I grabbed her shoulder. You didn't help the teacher before, did you? Asked Natalie. Why did you start? The questions confused Ina. Her empty eyes moved in slow circles, like a lost bumblebee in the bottom of a glass. It was kind of spooky. Be good. Get allowance, she said. Must go. The guinea pig pushed past me and plodded into her classroom. I drew Natalie down the hall. Be good? Get allowance? I said. What's this? A money zombie? I thought they only haunted Wall Street. Natalie smirked. Maybe she's only a part dime ghoul, eh? That makes sense. I groaned and led us to the cafeteria. A stray muffin might wipe out the taste of Natalie's puns. We leaned through the kitchen door. Mrs. Bagoon, head of cafeteria lady, was sliding a tray into her oven. Before I could even ask, she said, Too early, Chet, honey. Come back in ten minutes. Timing is everything. I turned to go, but something caught my eye. Deeper in the cafeteria, Shirley Chameleon leaned against the table, playing some kind of game. Beyond her, a couple of salamanders were sitting on the bench nearest the stage, watching a top-hatted Waldo the furball. We never could figure out what kind of animal he was. A hand-lettered sign on the stage read, the great who Waldini. Natalie and I stepped closer. Observe the watch in my hand, drawn Waldo, back and forth, back and forth. You're getting sleepy. Natalie nudged me. A hypnotist, she whispered. What? I said. You don't think that Waldo? I chuckled. Waldo couldn't hypnotize anyone. His magic is so lame. He couldn't put his foot to sleep if he sat on it. But while we watched, the salamanders grew slack-jawed. Raise your hand, said Waldo. Your right hand, said Waldo. Both of the kids raised their left hands. Your other right, said Waldo. They obeyed. I looked closer at my classmate, the doofus in the top hat. I'd always thought of Waldo as just a garden variety nerd. Did he really have the hypnotic power to make a zombie? Or was he so clueless he couldn't make toast without an instruction man? The bell rang. We had to get to class. But I was definitely going to keep an eye on that fur ball. Math class. 
What a way to start the day. If you ask me, it's a close second to bamboo shoots up the fingernails. But my teacher, Mr. Ratnose, wouldn't agree. He stood before the class, burbling like a kindergartner who's brought his booger collection for show and tell. Okay, class, listen carefully, he said. A man gave one son 10 cents and another son 15 cents. What time is it? Math is one mystery I don't care if I ever saw. I looked around, slowly, so I wouldn't draw the teacher's attention. I had expected Snooze City, but instead, most of my classmates were watching Mr. Ratnose like he was their favorite TV show. Shirley Chameleon, he asked. Math good, she slurred. Ah, uh, yes, said Mr. Ratnose. It is. Anyone else? A posh. We are reading The Big Nap. We are now in Chapter 9, Wall to Wall Waldo. Recess came not a minute too soon. I was itching for action like a warthog in poison ivy pants. First things first. First to grill Waldo like a bug on a porch light. I beat him out the door and waited down the hall. At recess, Waldo usually liked to practice his dorky magic tricks down by the playground, but not today. He was going to spill the beans first, and no disappearing act would save him. Waldo slouched down the hall with his big bag of magic. Waldo, I said, just a fur ball I wanted to see. Her, her. You want me? He said. I hooked an arm through his and led Waldo alongside the building. Oh, he said, you want to watch my tricks? I sneered. No, mister, I've had enough of your tricks. What do you mean? It's time to come clean. Mr. Hypnotist. Under heavy bangs, Waldo's eyes darted left and right, like frightened rabbits in a thicket. I, I don't know what you're talking about, he said. I crowded him against the wall. Someone's been turning students into zombies around here. Someone who knows hypnosis. Waldo gulped. Wasn't me, he said. Oh, no? How many hypnotists do you know at Emerson Hickey? I stared him down, eyeball to eyeball. Waldo cracked like a mug you make your mom in art class. Oh, okay. I have been practicing hypnosis, but not to hurt anybody. Tell it to the judge, I said. You turned half our class into drooling zombies. And that poor little Ina, how could you? Ina? My tail curled and snapped like a bullwhip. You're dealing with powers you cannot comprehend. You've messed with the supernatural, buddy boy, and now it's time to pay the piper. Waldo hung his head, cowed. I, I'm so, so sorry, he stammered. I just w wanted to be in a school talent show. He looked up. But what piper? And who's Ina? Oh, you know, I said, pacing before him. That little third grade guinea pig? One of your first victims, no doubt. Waldo's face squinched up in puzzlement. Wait, I didn't hypnotize any guinea pigs. I stopped. You didn't? No, he said, and I only tried hypnosis a few times. Waldo sighed. Usually, they'd sing instead of dance, or pick their pocket instead of their nose. I gave him my best steely-eyed gaze. Do you swear by the golden gopher? It's our school's mascot. I think the gopher is kind of lame, but most of the fair-bearing students love it. I swear by the gopher, said Waldo. I'm no hypnotist. I'm not even a very good magician, but I can do card tricks. He rummaged in his bag. I grabbed his arm. No, that's okay. I believe you. And I did. Waldo was about as good at lying as I was about skipping dessert. You could read his face like a book, the kind with very big letters and lots of pictures. Thanks for believing me, he said. Now, what's this about zombies? I told Waldo what Natalie and I had learned so far. He might be a doofus, but no reason he had to turn into a zombie doofus. 
So keep an eye out, I said. And if you see anything shady, let me know. You mean like an oak tree? Her, her. I winced. We'll do, Chet, Waldo saluted clumsily. Hey, you sure you don't want to see me pull a scarf out of my... But before he could finish, I scooted off to find Natalie. Fun's fun, but a whole recess with Waldo would be too, too weird for words. My partner waited in line at the tether ball port. A gangly crane was up. He swung at the ball and staggered off balance. The ball on his leash whipped around and around, nearly tying him to the pole like a string fish kebab. While the crane's friends unwrapped him, I gave Natalie the scoop on Waldo. She frowned and cocked her head. So if it's not him, then who's the zombie master? I can't say his name, but his initials are Cool Beans. The librarian? The same. I led Natalie away from the line. He knows too much about zombies. It's time we find out what's behind that closed door in the library. We strolled across the grass. Near the library steps, Natalie and I slowed to let a small herd of kids across our path. Cross our path. Tony Newt, Bo's twin brother, leaned from the crowd. Hey, Chet, he said. Check this out. It's the latest thing. He waved some boxy toy at me, but I had no time for fun and frolic. Danger was blooming like zits on a junk food junkie. Tony and his group trumpled down the hall. At the library door, Natalie grabbed my shoulder. Wait, he said. Just how are we going to get in there? And when we do, how are we going to stop him? That's a, that's one jumbo-sized possum, Chet. Ha, I said. Would Sam Spade let some big lug scare him? Would Sherlock Holmes worry about having a plan? Not that Natalie nodded. Yes, she said, they would. I paused. Okay, then let's ring with the class bell. Investigate at lunch, I said. Natalie sniggered. Good plan. All right. We still don't have answers. Just more questions after chapter nine. And we're going to find out what's next in chapter 10. So continue this journey with me into chapter 10.